The following is a presentation of ABC's Wide World of Sports, home of the World and U.S. Figure Skating Championships. Test, test. Check one, two, one, two. Welcome to Detroit, the proud home of the Motown Town. Hey, get ready to turn up the volume because it's time to get this party started. In the city where the Motown sound was born, gold records give way to gold medals today in Detroit. Because here come figure skating's brightest stars at the Hershey's Kisses Figure Skating Challenge next on ABC Sports. And the Palace of Auburn Hills, just outside of downtown Detroit, Michigan. Welcome, everybody, along with Susie Wynn and Peter Carruthers. I'm Terry Gannon. Today, the U.S. takes on the world in a team competition. The U.S. team led by Michelle Kwan, the three-time world champ. Christy Yamaguchi, two teenage sensations, and then the three men who will vie for the U.S. title in Boston this season. The world team is led by two of Russia's best, Arena Slutskaya and Maria Butirskaya, with help from two greats who are now winning on the professional level, and three men who between them have won eight world championships, including the reigning world number one, Alexei Yagudin. Now, here is how this team competition works. The U.S. versus the world, one-on-one -on -one individual showdowns. You get two points for a win, one for a loss, team with the highest total wins. And the first individual matchup, Christy Yamaguchi taking on Surya Bonali, the 92 Olympic champion, battling the three-time world silver medalist. The 26-year-old from Champigny, Sermon, France, now living in Las Vegas, the eight-time French national champion. She won five European titles as well, and now winning on the professional level. Here she is. But the funny thing, Terry and Peter, is that we don't know what she's skating to. She always creates an element of surprise. Not sure she knows what she's <laughs> going to skate to. Improvises often during her programs. Beautiful opening triple loop, and I can almost guarantee you that we'll look forward to that amazing backflip that she does with her legs split where she lands on one foot. Triple toe loop. Fantastic.
and she just added another one. Remember, the ladies can only do a maximum of three triples, and that was her fourth. One of the differences in the rules here, this is an interpretive free skate, not the normal free skate we might there, see at the Olympics. <laughs> there, 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 there it is. The split backflip. That was kind of her parting shot at the Nagano Olympics, too. Remember when she did that, even though it was against the rules there. Just to say, hey, judges, look, I can do this, too. What's so great about Surya is she's skating now with a sense of freedom in her upper body. She's really moving very comfortably. Yes, unfortunately, she'll take a one-tenth deduction on both marks for skating techniques and presentation for that extra triple, but who cares? Yeah, it's still you know, a great performance. You think she really cares? I mean, even at times when she hasn't impressed judges, she has always known how to get an audience going. Absolutely. And here's a look at the panel of five judges here this afternoon. By the way, while each skater can earn up to $20,000 for an individual win today, the payment for each judge $300, and that, of course, is before taxes. Peter, what are they looking for? Well, this is the interpretive free skate, and although the men can do four triple or quad jumps and the ladies three triple jumps, the emphasis is on interpretation of the music and artistry. Very different from what you would see at a national championship or a world championships where jumping passes are paramount. This was spectacular. Split jump, triple toe loop, Left foot jabbing in to get her up, and then she does another one, back to back. Outstanding height, very athletic. Here is the fourth triple that she added, only allowed to do three, but still, you know, calculated risk. This is absolutely incredible. A backflip is hard enough, but splitting the legs apart like that and then landing on one foot, spectacular. Now, there'll be two sets of marks, as always, the first for skating techniques. And there are the numbers, 5.5 up to 5.7. They could have been better, yep. better, as you said, if she didn't do the extra triple. Well, I wonder if she knows exactly what the rules are. Uh, it's too bad to see these marks come down one tenth. And the second set of marks for presentation, Susie, in the 5.6, five, 5.7 five, range. She's a wonderful performer. As I said, she's just getting more and more comfortable. A delight to watch. So Surya Bonali gets things underway here in suburban Detroit for the world team. Next, here comes Olympic gold medalist Christy Yamaguchi, who was married in the offseason to hockey player Brett Hedekin of the Florida Panthers. A marriage made on ice. Enter Carrie's Skate with a Great Sweepstakes for the chance to skate with Peggy Fleming and Sasha Cohen at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championship. See details where you buy Carrie. Two-time world champion, 1992 Olympic gold medalist, professional champion, ladies and gentlemen, Christy Yamaguchi. The Hershey's Kisses Figure Skating Challenge continues here in suburban Detroit. Christy Yamaguchi. The 92 Olympic champion on the ice, trying to top the effort of Surya Bonali. Her music, Desert Rose by Sting. jumping technique has not dropped off eight years after winning the Olympic gold medal. She will open with the difficult triple lutz. Look at that. That's so as, easy. As good as it was in 92, if not better.
just floats into every element. Everything she does has a softness and such a quality to it. Twenty-nine years old now. Fremont, California, lives and trains in San Francisco, spends time in Reno, training as well. Not only the 92 Olympic gold medalist, but a two-time world champion, a 92 U.S. champion. Interesting, she told us that her husband, Brett, of the NHL's Florida Panthers, can beat her in a sprint from one end of the ring to another. But if they go 10 laps, she'll take them every time. Program. She's done the Lutz. Here's the triple loop. A little bit of a snag on the ending, but that experience coming through. attention with the triple lutz as the jumps went on not as technically proficient as we have seen in the past with Chris, christy yamaguchi but still so this is also is a departure for her she has skated to so many themes and, and types of music that she's always venturing out trying new things i respect that this was terrific the opening triple lutz again i see no difference from today <laughs> Tracing all the way back to 92 when she won her Olympic gold medal. Look at the fist pump there showing, yeah, I can still do it, folks. Then the jumps fell off just a little bit. Here on the triple loop, she gets up into the air very nicely, but then tilts a little bit, and you can see the left foot just touch the ice. We're looking for a better landing there. The rivals, Christy Yamaguchi, Surya Bonali, who will win this matchup and gain two points for their squad. Skating techniques, 5.6 all the way up to a 5.9. Remember, the emphasis, even though we replay the jumps, they were not perfect for her. The expression of the character within the music was very good. And look, that is shown here with the presentation marks. 5.8, 5.9 once again. So it's Christy Yamaguchi who gets the win. She picks up two points for Team USA. And right now the Americans lead the world team 2-1. And so the first one-on-one -on -one matchup is now in the books. Welcome once again, everybody. Terry Gannon, along with Peter Carruthers and Susie Wynn. And Peter, this is a field that includes eight world champions. Their accomplishments date back more than two decades, and we are able to see a number of high-profile rivalries here. Well, there's some great matchups, beginning with three-time world champion Alexi uh, Gooden. He will take on Timothy Gable from the United States, Mr. Quad, who upset Yagudin earlier this season at Skate America. Then there's the 15-year-old sensation Sarah Hughes, who also earlier on the Grand Prix at Nations Cup should have beaten Maria Buterskaya, former world champion. Now, Buterskaya knows how good Hughes is because she was out yesterday practicing triple axles. But whether you're talking about the pros or the Olympic eligibles, really all of these people define the sport of figure skating. Well, and the veterans certainly know the younger group is gaining on them, and that is a rivalry that is developing. But Susie, one
one that is at its peak right now and maybe the headline rivalry in all of figure skating, Arena Slutskaya and Michelle Kwan. What's funny about their rivalry is they both downplay it and keep it light. But don't be fooled. Both of these women watch each other with particular interest on every practice session. Both of them are great competitors. So you know, as with all great competitors, every time you meet, it's important. They both have their eyes set on the gold medal for 2002. So what's great about this rivalry, it'll push them both to greatness. That matchup takes place in just a little bit, but up next, Two of the best men in the world, Michael Weiss taking on Kurt Browning, the two-time U.S. champion against the four-time world champion. And Browning always offers something a little bit different on the ice. Super freak, super freak, super freak. International Figure Skating, the world's largest and most complete magazine for the sport and art of figure skating. From Olympic champions to skating's brightest stars, International Figure Skating brings you on the ice and behind the scenes. Call 1-800-627-4052 to receive eight issues for just $19. That's more than 50% off our newsstand price. Call 1-800-627-4052 to stay on top of the world of international figure skating. Earlier backstage, Kurt Browning. Yeah, let's see him do that while jumping a triple axel, huh? He's joined Susie Wynn now. Thanks, Terry. Now I'm here with Kurt Browning. We're going to play a little trivial pursuit. Now, you might have to do a 50-50, a lifeline, oh, or, or okay. ask the audience. But who was the first mandolin, a quadruple first toe loop, hey. in the 1988 World Championships in Budapest? 12 years ago. Me! Now, oh. no, you're not. Now, uh, did you know that you were going to get this whole quad started, this whole quad business started? Back then in 88, I really wanted to. Um, Brian Botana was close. Joseph Zabobczyk almost had it. And I had nothing to lose. So I thought, I really, really, really want this jump. And um, heck, I was young. Just Keep throwing it till you land it. <laughs> well, great job. We love your skating, Kurt. Thank you. Continued success. All right. All righty. Good job. Back to you, Terry. Susie, a lifeline in Trivial Pursuit. You'll never make a game show host that way. Remember, the Grand Prix continues tomorrow on ABC, 2 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific. From Paris, Trophy La Ligue, event number five, Alexei Yagudin leads the way for the man. Right here on ABC Sports. Two-time world round a dynamite competitor, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Weiss. Meanwhile, it's on to the next one-on-one -on -one confrontation here in suburban Detroit. Michael Weiss, the two-time and reigning world bronze medalist, two-time and reigning U.S. champion, stepping out onto the ice. Much of his season, well, his debut really delayed because of the injury on his left foot, specifically his middle toe on that left foot. Come back at Cup of Russia, disappointing. Now, finally, back to where he's training at full speed. I talked to both Michael and his coach, Audrey Whisaker, and they have said that they've turned the corner on that bad performance at Cup of Russia. He's feeling more confident. The injury has subsided. He's jumping well again. Now in a new pair of boots. on that triple lutz. Remember, this is his free program, the same program that he will do at the national championships. A little bit, little bit different choreography to that, but still to the same William Tell Overture. And right away, Terry, we see a different skater on the ice. leaning in the air causing the fall.
Michael, of course, still lives and trains in his hometown of Fairfax, Virginia. His wife, Lisa, here in Detroit with him. Involved in a number of different sports as Michael just to train, and they tell us he has a 38-inch vertical leap. I want to get him out on a basketball court, <laughs> test that at some point. That, that's huge. very good in terms of the height, the rotation. We weren't seeing that on the Grand Prix in Russia, but they turned the corner there. Injury, but you mentioned earlier it may have been caused by the boots. He's on his third pair of yeah. boots already this season. There you go, <laughs> Sonia Bonalia and Michael Weiss. Remember, again, I want to emphasize this is the interpretive free program. His program is watered down in the sense that he cannot do the triples or the quad that you will see him attempt at the national championships. But to me, it's, it appears that there's more spark in his skating once again. He's on the comeback trail. the Michael Weiss that everybody knows. Yeah, I have to say that considering where he has come from, his wife Lisa watching on, happy Michael to see him, him turn around and do well. Considering where he was, the Cup of Russia, where he is now, he's doing much better. That's what he needs and that's what he wants. But the first time since that disappointing performance in Russia that he's been able to test it in competition, so he's got to breathe a huge sigh of relief right now. This is where he has improved so much. The triple axle, and then he follows it up with the triple toe loop. Now, he's been really struggling on that, but much better there. This is how he generates the rotation. The right foot kicks through, and then the feet come together to really create the spin he needs to rotate three and a half times. 5.6, 5.6, and 5.5. First set of marks, 5.5 to 5.7, the range. And his marks for presentation. And he'll... 5.7. He's interested to see what his second mark will do with the William Tell Overture theme. Presentation marks, the 5.6 to 5.8 range this time. Michael Weiss got to be extremely pleased to be back and skating well once again coming off the injury. And up next, the five-time Canadian champion, Kurt Browning, will try to top that right after this message and a word from our ABC station. I can make it rain whenever I want it to. He is one of the most original and creative athletes in the sport from Canada. Kurt Browning. Back in the Motor City, middle of the second inning, if you will. Michael Weiss has already skated for the U.S. team. Now for the internationals, the four-time world champion from Canada, Kurt Browning. Skating to Don't Fence Me In by Holly Cole. Let me be by myself in the evening breeze. I'll 
was trying triple axles in the warm-up. He might try it. Here he is, and he's got it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but look at the entertainment quality of his skating. Perfect for an interpretive group. He wasn't only trying triple axles in the warm-up. He was trying quads yes. in the warm-up, too. It's amazing that it was... But 12 years ago, when he became the first man to complete a quad jump in competition. Fantastic. The entrance is what made that so good. Entertainer that skating needs. So agile. Look at those double axles. Does he have one more? Yes, he does. Wonderful the way he did that in a circular pattern. You know, when you watch a Kurt Browning skate, Peter, everyone else, it seems at least, today in skating, the jumps are the thing. And the in-between parts, you know, they kind of do it because they have to. With him, it's the other way around. The in-between parts are the meat and Correct. the potatoes of his program, the jumps, well, he does those too. And that's exactly what you want in an interpretive free skate. Those jumps just enhance his choreography. Wonderful. And he had a better time than anyone with his program. Kurt Browning. In men's figure skating, Kurt Browning has what we call great feet. He can get up in the air, rotate fast, because he can pull it in so quickly to create that rotation. He is so quick to collect everything to create that rotation. Look at, he's got the spurs on his skates, no less. Triple toe, triple toe. Two in a row. Great jumping prowess. Little two foot, but no big deal. Now remember, in the individual matchups, you get two points for the win, and the skater who ends up on the losing end receives one point. Yeah, Kurt Browning, a little bit out of breath, but not much, as he sits alongside Michael Weiss. We'll see who gets the edge in this showdown now. The first set for skating techniques, 5-6 to 5-8. The range. Uh, I don't agree with the 5.6 from Great Britain. He was better than that. And now presentation marks of 5.8. Look at that. There we go. The rest, 5.9. That's more like it. So it's Kurt Browning who gets the two points for the win. And now we've got a tie ball game. The USA three, the world team three. Thank you, Sandra. Kurt Browning always in character. Don't forget the celebrated matchup still to come. Three-time world champ Michelle Kwan taking on her closest rival from Russia, Irina Slutskaya. <laughs> Up next, 
Todd Eldridge, the 29-year-old, takes on an even more experienced skater, the 38-year-old Brian Orser. Congratulations to the winners of the Cary Lotion Skate with the Great Sweepstakes. The lucky winners get to skate with Peggy Fleming and Sasha Cohen at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championship. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Speed Pass. Today's way to pay. It's free from mobile. And this mobile update takes a look at a one-on-one -on -one matchup here in Detroit between Sasha Cohen of the U.S. and Yuka Sato of Japan. Sato, the 27-year-old, born in Tokyo. She now lives in the Detroit area, married to Jason Dungeon, the two-time U.S. pairs gold medalist. The 94 world champion skated here against Sasha Cohen, who is only 16 years of age. Last year, she burst onto the scene as the U.S. silver medalist, finishing right behind Michelle Kwan, went on to finish sixth at the Junior World Championships. This season, there is no question she will buy for the gold medal against Kwan and others in Boston at the U.S. Nationals. And here in Detroit, it was Cohen who got the best of Sato. She picks up two points for the U.S. team. And right now, the U.S. with a 5-4 to four lead over the world team. Five-time national champion, 1996 world champion, and international champion, ladies and gentlemen, Todd Eldridge. Todd Eldridge on the ice, the 29-year-old from Chatham, Massachusetts, but he lives just down the road from here. I wonder what Todd drove over today. <laughs> Ferrari, the oh, Corvette, the yeah. what, which one? Very short drive for Todd to this competition. The 96 world champion, set to go. His music from 1492, Conquest of Paradise by Vangelis. Yesterday he was trying his quadruple toe loop. He learned it over the summer. He has done it in competition. Question is, will he do it here? No, he's changed up for a triple axle, and that was a beauty. Head to head with Brian Orser, the veteran from Canada, 87 world champ. Seen Todd, of course, already in the Grand Prix series twice. Skate America and Skate Canada. He's locked up a spot for the Grand Prix final. But there's a lot more on the line for Todd Eldridge this year. For only two men will go to the World Championship. So you really have a big battle between Timothy Gable, Michael Weiss, and Todd Eldridge.
A nice triple loop. He's done three triples. You cannot watch that without getting dizzy. I don't care. He is such a great spinner. Stays right in one spot and really gets cranking on that spin. The judges certainly respect that. And Peter, you know, it's such an eclectic group skating today here in Detroit. Christy Yamaguchi, 29 years of age. We talked about how she hasn't really lost much since winning an Olympic gold medal. Todd Eldridge is 29 as well. He really never went anywhere. He hasn't <laughs> skated full-time in the eligible level the last couple of years, but the five-time national champion keeping it right where it's been for a while. He did two triple axles in his program. Here's the second one in combination. Great height. And just what he needs for a perfect double toe loop on the end of it. And then you can see, unlike most skaters, he jumps off the right foot on the triple axle, whereas most skaters jump off the left. Five, one, five, no, he looks lonely, though. Nobody's sitting next to him. Got all the teammates yeah. and the opposing team behind. But now the marks for Todd Eldridge. Skating techniques, 5'7", uh, the rest 5'8". These are good marks for Todd. Remember, this is part of the big picture for this season, for him to come back this year and be competitive with his hope of getting to the World Championships. And now presentation marks 5.8, 5.9, sharing it with the group behind him. Good performance for the hometown guy, Tad Eldridge. An effort that will be hard to top, but it's up to the 38-year-old. Ryan Orser, the 87 world champion, is next. We're back at the Palace in Auburn Hills. The Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge continues, but first... A reminder, Monday night, right here on ABC, a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. The St. Louis Rams down in Tampa to take on the Buccaneers. 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, Monday night, right here on ABC. Oh, Canada, Brian Orser. Todd Eldridge's work is done. Now it's up to Brian Orser, the 38-year-old from Canada. Two-time Olympic silver medalist and in many ways, was ahead of his time. If the rules had been what they are now, he may have won two Olympic gold medals. 87 world champion. Skating to Against All Odds by Phil Collins. South Cow. I know Brian so well. I know he was not happy with that. When that happens to him on that jump, his timing gets a little bit messed up and he's only able to do a double. But he's very capable of doing a triple. And Peter, I alluded to it a moment ago, but you look at his two Olympic performances in 84 when he lost to Scott Hamilton. There were school figures then. He was so low after that portion of the competition. Even though he beat Scott in both the free skate and the short program, he wasn't able to win. The Battle of the Bryans in 88 in Calgary, ties were broken 
with the technical mark. Now they're broken with the artistic mark. If that were the case back then, he would have won a goal that year, too. Nice backflip, triple toe loop. That's something you don't see in Olympic eligible competition, as you mentioned earlier, Terry. And it's just such a showstopper when you see it. It's getting better as the program goes on here, really finding his timing. Peter, I must admit, I do like to watch a skater skate very well who was born before me. <laughs> that is nice to see. But you know, it's the longevity that these pros like Christy Yamaguchi, Brian Orser, and Kurt Browning have. They just have stayed in the sport and they do continue to push the envelope. They will not rest on their laurels, always trying to improve. What makes this so incredible is here you have Brian Orsa doing this incredible backflip somersault, and then he goes right into a triple toe loop without even hesitating. Really terrific to watch. Very athletic. Brian Orser for Well, Brian Orser has topped out Eldridge in terms of teddy bears and things thrown on the ice from the audience. What about? The marks now, skating techniques 5.4 up to 5.7. Well, you can't really compare him to Todd Eldridge. Todd Eldridge has a lot more speed in his skating and his technical content was higher, but in the second mark, Orser still is terrific. Up to the five point, a couple of 5.8s for Brian Orser, but it's not enough. It's Todd Eldridge who gets the victory in the one-on-one -on -one showdown, so two points added to the total for Team USA, one point to the world total. The U.S. now with a 7-5 to five lead. And up next here in the Motor City, Sarah Hughes takes on Maria Butierskaya, the 15-year-old trying to hurry success against the 99 world champion from Russia. You gotta try. profile matchups in Motown today as the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge continues. Terry Gannon, Susie Wynn, Peter Carruthers, and right now it is the U.S. with the lead 7-5 to five over the world team. Sarah Hughes. And here at the Palace at Auburn Hills, it is Sarah Hughes taking the ice. The youngster from Great Neck, New York, only 15 years of age and taking on Maria Butierskaya in a one-on-one -on -one showdown this afternoon. Skating to the music from the Broadway musical, Fosse. We've seen her three times this season in the Grand Prix. She's won medals in every event. Her chances look good for the Grand Prix final in Tokyo. Edge 
fast jump, the triple loop, really solid. Starting to show so much more expression in her skating. Interpretive free, bringing that out. And this is a different style for her. It's a little bit more on the jazzy side. It's fun to see her trying something new. Falling leaves, split jump. Oh, tough pause on the triple lutz. You know, part of her costume seems to be coming undone, a belt or something. That could have distracted her on the triple lutz. It's not a thread <laughs> holding the costume You know, she may skate on TV every week. She may be among the elite in the world, but at home, she's just one of six. She's got to fight with everybody else to watch her TV shows. <laughs> That's got to be a distraction, though, yeah. Susie, that costume comes apart. You can tell that she's being a little bit careful. You can see it in her face. It's hard when you're trying to do something that's new, new choreography, new movement, and the costume's not cooperating. into this triple toe loop, no problem. is really too bad about her costume because she was obviously distracted. I think she would have executed the character within the music better mm -hmm. had that belt not broken. This is uncharacteristic of Sarah Hughes to just collapse on a landing, but that's basically what happened. The triple Lutz getting up in the air. She didn't even have a chance on that. I definitely think she was distracted off her game there with the costume. Again, what goes wrong is what's happening in the lower body, the legs, right foot not getting back for the landing. Sarah now sparkling under the lights here, waiting for her marks. There's the first set in the five, six, five, seven range. And these marks would have been so much higher had she hit that Lutz and looked a little more confident in the approach. You gotta like the courage, though, to try something new. Oh, yeah. And that's what it's about. Yeah. Presentation marks now 5.6 up to 5.8 the range. Certainly not going out there and doing a competitive program, a nice interpretive free. And a heads up, bit of congratulations from the other side. Kurt Browning saying, way to go. Sarah Hughes with her effort. Next, Maria Butirskaya gets her chance. The USA taking on the world here at the Hershey's Kisses Figure Skating Challenge. Maria Butirskaya of Russia 
set to take on Sarah Hughes of the U.S. But a reminder, ABC brings you the holiday story of an angel, a preacher, and his wife. Oscar winner Denzel Washington and Whitney Houston star in The Preacher's Wife tonight at 8, 7 central here on ABC. Right now, it's Maria Butierskaya trying to keep the hopes for the world team alive. The U.S. currently with a 7-5 to five lead. And a moment ago, the efforts by Sarah Hughes, now the skater who is 13 years her senior. The 28-year-old from Moscow, the 99 world champion, set to go here. Skating to possession. fell on the triple lutz for oh Puterskaya very good one there mistake she often makes she pitches forward on her landings and there's no way the blade can, can accommodate a landing when you're in that type of position She's off. And this is what happens to Maria. She abandons her technique and timing at, in situations, and then she has poor results on the jumps. She did say she was a little sore today after trying all those triple axles yesterday. Well, you mentioned that, too. And, and we saw Sarah Hughes try something new with the type of program that we just saw a moment ago. And Maria Butierskaya, even though she's 28 and six-time Russian national champion, always willing to try something else new and recently she has been working on that triple axle. Hardest jump in skating next to the quad. Yeah. here at catch foot but not nearly as fast as Sarah Hughes' spins. I dare you to listen to that music and not <laughs> nod your head along to the beat. I mean, no. Very hypnotic, isn't it? Yes. Both Sarah Hughes and Maria Butoskaya not skating their best. Yeah, she told us before she went out there that it was a different type of program. She wasn't sure if she was really suited to it, but going to give it a shot. Some mistakes, but uh, we'll see what the judges think.
This is supposed to be her favorite jump. She has told us that, but not in this case. Tilting in the air, and she just doesn't absorb the shock on the right foot to land with a smooth landing. A hard fall. This happens to Maria when she loses her timing and her rhythm. And then here she is able to get up on the triple toe loop, left foot jabbing in to get her in the air, but then not good on the landing, left foot going down. So her jumping technique, definitely not where it needs to be. Now remember in the individual matchups, you get two points for the win. And the skater who ends up on the losing end receives one point. Well, and there were two very high level skaters uh -huh. alongside from two different generations. That was interesting. Now, Sarah Hughes, I think, just realized something. Skating techniques 5.5 to 5.7. This should be very close. But obviously, uh, they know, or Sarah knows, that she has taken Buterskaya here. Presentation marks 5, 7 to 5, 9. She knew it as soon as she saw the marks, though it was yet not announced. There goes Maria Butyrskaya. Sarah Hughes is going to wait around to smile and cheer a little bit. The first time that she has beaten Maria Butyrskaya, and now a commanding lead for the U.S., 9 to 6 over the world team. And heating things up here in Detroit next, the man eyeing a fourth straight world title. Alexei Yagudin skates against the American who's already beaten him once this season, Timothy Gable. They're next here in Motown. Earlier this season at Skate America International, the first of six events in the Grand Prix series, Timothy Gable, the American silver medalist, pulled off a remarkable feat for the third time in his career. Three quads in one program. The American who has hopes of winning a gold medal at the U.S. Nationals was taking on the three-time world champion from Russia, Alexei Yagudin, who was not at the peak of his form. The altitude in Colorado Springs bothered him. At the end of his program, clearly disappointed, and he sunk to even lower depth when he looked at his scores. It was not Yagudin, but Gable, who would win the gold medal at Skate America. And the two men meet again today. Right now, they're with Susie Wynn backstage. Thanks, Terry. I'm here in great company again. Now, Alexi Yagudin, how hard is it as world champion to keep the pressure off and, and not let it bother you in these performances? I think it's such a good idea that we can compete in such a, uh, interesting events like Hershey Kisses and just it's Team USA against Team world, world Team, and but I think it's more going to be pressure with the Worlds and Europeans, but here we're just having fun and just trying to make people happy. Timothy, you've been on a whirlwind tour this year. How do you keep your energy up for, for an event like this? Well, I just, uh, when I get home from different events, I train every day. I train very consistently, and uh, you know, that's really big for Frank, that he expects me to train well. And uh, it really helps because, you know, every, every day is the same. I work the same every day, so I try to try to maintain a consistent way of skating. Well, good luck to both of you, and we look forward to watching you throughout the season. Thank you. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, thank you. And Yagudin's counterpart from Russia, Irina Slutskaya, the current Russian national champion, getting ready a little bit later. She takes on Michelle Kwan. Meanwhile, the U.S. with a commanding lead, 9-6 to six over the world team as the three-time world champion from Russia, Alexei Yagudin, steps onto the ice. Just 20 years of age from St. Petersburg, did not have a very good effort at altitude in Colorado Springs, and it was Timothy Gable who got the best of them that day, but since then, Yagudin has been outstanding. Knives ready to go. What's amazing is to watch how he is able to jump with these knives. Not a program recommended for young skaters at home just starting out. Or anyone else for that matter. His music the motion picture soundtrack, Gladiator. You only do four triples. Oh my goodness. To be able to jump like that with your fists clenched with props, incredible. There, the triple axe, look at that. Now, 
Peter, we saw Surya Bonali earlier in the show do more than the allowed three triples for the ladies. The men are allowed four. Big mistake for him on the triple loop. Falling off of his axis. Not staying straight up and down in the air. watered-down version of his free program, the program that we have seen on the Grand Prix and the one we'll see at the World Championships, but not the typical jumping machine that we're used to seeing. And a big mistake in that program on one of his jumps. Can't be great every time out, I guess. He was terrific at Skate Canada, maybe the performance of the year so far. Alexei Yagudin. Boy, does he really get up in the air on this triple axle. He does it without the knives, and he does it with the knives. Got to make sure they're turned out right so you don't stab yourself. Very solid. And then here, this is the spread eagle as he prepares for what was supposed to be the triple loop. But watch what happens. He starts to really lean in the air, and he's off his axis, and he's only able to do two turns. You know, the more you spend time around this guy, the more you realize he's really an outgoing and engaging personality. You don't get all of that when you just watch him skate. Skating techniques, five sevens, five eights. A three-time world champion that has told us he's lazy, actually. Yeah. It's hard to believe, but here are his marks going from five seven to five eight for skating techniques. The presentation. Five eights, five nines. <laughs> His work is done. done. Alexei Yagudin, the three-time and reigning world champ. Up next, the stage is set for the U.S. silver medalist. Timothy Gable takes the ice here in Motown when we come back. Jackson 5 bring this back to the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge. Alexei Yagudin showing Kurt Browning the knives he used on the ice saying, what'd you think these were real? Come on, I'm not stupid. 
And a reminder, tomorrow, watch out for Brendan Fraser swinging into action on George, George, George of the Jungle. 7, 6 Central on the wonderful world of Disney. Right here on ABC. Silver medalist, here is Kennedy Gable. In the meantime, the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge continues, and we find out if Timothy Gable can top the effort of Alexei Yagudin. Here is the 20-year-old from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, recently moved from Cleveland out to Los Angeles. Like Yagudin, this is an adaptation of his free program, of course, with less jumps. Music from the motion picture, Henry V. In the interpretive free program, the men can only do a maximum of four triples. They can do a quad. Here, opening the double lutz for him. The quadruple sow cow. Oh, a real cliffhanger, but big points there. But don't forget, it's about expression of the character within the music. Triple Axel, he's got to be shocked. Quadruple toe loop, really huge in the air. How difficult is it to come in and say, all right, this is an interpretive free skate. I'm just going to adapt that to the rules here and the style here and actually pull that off. Well, it actually is really hard to do because you're not doing what you usually do every day. The skaters that are adapting with their free programs here in the interpretive free, they're changing their choreography, and that can really be a distraction when you're performing. Remember, you can do a maximum of four triples for the men or four quads. Now, he's done two quads. A total of four triple jumps or more difficult, so a combination yes. of those, yes. There, You know, I think Yagudin is going to beat him here. And the reason is, I don't really see the character coming out in his music, the expression of the character within the music. The musicality. Yagudin had that. Great footwork pass, very quick steps, changes of direction. Triple flip.
it, you know, Timmy Gable has made such improvement this year. But when you see him in a watered-down environment, and granted, the quads, fantastic. But in the interpretive free, is it what the judges are looking for? That's the big question. Yep. Different type of skating, and certainly not the effort that we saw at Skate America with the three quads in one program and the victory over Yagudin. But we shall see what the judges think momentarily. He is really able to spring into the air, pull the arms in, get the legs together, and the feet to create that great rotation on his quad. Fantastic. The triple axle, unlike the quadruple toe, you have to edge off the left outside edge going forwards. Three and a half rotation, starting to lean, doesn't get what he needs to have a successful landing, and the foot just blows out from underneath him. And then this... Again, the quadruple toe loop. He is just a master of that. Really able to spring into the air and create that rotation. Now remember, in the individual matchups, you get two points for the win, and the skater who ends up on the losing end receives one point. So he and Alexei Yagud now wait for the judges' marks. There's Alexei, the first set, five sevens, five eights. At the one 5.8 from the Russian judge, the highest mark there. And now the second set of marks, Peter, for presentation, 5.5 up to 5.7. And those clearly are not as high as Yagudin's. Uh, that contest is over. Nope, so it's Alexei Yagudin who gets the victory here in the individual showdown, but it is 10 to 8. The U.S. with the lead, and at this point, that is an insurmountable lead. The U.S. is going to get the victory today here in Detroit. But coming up, the headline matchup of the day, Michelle Kwan taking on Arena Slutskaya of Russia next. So far at the Hershey's Kisses figure skating challenge here at the Palace of Auburn Hills, Christy Yamaguchi got the U.S. off on the right foot. The 92 Olympic champion proving she hasn't lost her edge since the Olympic Games. Kurt Browning, the Canadian champ, five times over and world champion four times. Maybe the most entertaining of all of them and has the most fun, the yippee Kaye move at the end in cowboy character. And the score was tied at that point. The most experienced man here, Brian Orser, the 38-year-old with the backflip triple toe, bringing the crowd out of its seats. And the youngest competitor here, 15-year-old Sarah Hughes, took on the elegant veteran Maria Butierskaya and won, giving the U.S. a 10 to 8 lead at this point. She is the reigning world silver medalist and the 2000 Russian European so it comes down to the final matchup of the afternoon, and even though the team competition is already wrapped up, the U.S. will get the victory today in Auburn Hills. Don't think for a moment that these two skaters aren't concerned about what happens in this individual showdown. Arena Slutskaya taking on Michelle Kwan, and here is the 21-year-old from Moscow, the current Russian national champion who has beaten Michelle two of the last three times she has skated against her. The music is from the motion picture Schindler's List. series so far for Arena. She'll try to wrap up a spot at the Grand Prix final in Japan at the NHK Trophy. Remember, she asked her federation to send her to Skate Canada to go one-on-one -on -one with Michelle Kwan. Boy, is that solid.
is set up for the triple loop. She does a series of what are called three turns. So the momentum builds, but boy, she can really handle the momentum. her now that she's no longer trying to prove that she should be back at this level coming up that awful year in 99 great year last year she seems just very content with what she's doing on the ice she's gained a lot of confidence over the past season she looks more comfortable with herself and she's you can tell she's really enjoying her skating pacing she wasn't rushing to do elements she was really focusing on the timing of the music and her skating was indicative of that nice piece very good very relaxed at this point in her season and in her career the three-time world medalist from russia arena slutskaya getting things off to a good start with this triple lutz nice height and a good solid back posture on the landing. Skating into this with a series, as Susie said, back threes, that gets her timing together, actually. Your timing and your pacing and the rhythm you need to do a nice jump like that. So it can be beneficial. So what will the judges think now? Here's the first set for skating technique, Susie. She really skated so well. I think the five sevens are a little bit low. And now, and now the presentation. Oh, those are higher. 5.7, but up to three 5.9s. That is a very high standard that has just been set by Arena Slutskaya. Representing the United States, Michelle Kwan. Can it be topped now by Michelle Kwan, though? The three-time and reigning world champion. Who, of course, beat Slutskaya at the World Championships last season. But, as we said, she has lost two of the last three matchups between the two. Here's the 20-year-old from Torrance, California. The music, Beautiful World, performed by Sumi Joe. So 
beautiful Lux. Just complete confidence. history to regain a world title twice. Last year she became the first American woman since our own Peggy Fleming to win three world titles. Somebody in the lobby actually came up to both of us today, Terry, and said, make sure you say nice things about Michelle Kwan. I didn't really understand where that comment came from, but the fact is that she really reached deep within the character of the music, put on a nice program, and that was well skated. Hard not to say nice things right now. I think where it comes from, though, is that people like watching Michelle Kwan skate no matter what program it is and no matter if there are mistakes or not in that program. Gets up into the air nicely on this triple Lutz. She really has good shoulders and a good upper body right where she wants to be. Good rotation there. Nice way to start the program. And she followed up with the triple sow cow. She doesn't rush her jumps, meaning she doesn't change the timing and get over anxious. Good flow, a little sluggish on the left foot. That is the foot off the ice on the landing there. Her last combination, the triple toe loop. Followed up with the toe, double toe loop. Very nice rotation there, and easy timing to get up into her second Large jump into Michelle the layback. skating technique. Five yeah, good look seven. at the two skaters Five that make up the top rivalry Five in figure skating seven. right now. Five Michelle saying hello, and folks back Five home, skating six. techniques. Isn't this interesting? All the way up to 5.9 from the Finnish judge, and then a 5.6 from the American. Now the second set for presentation. Five eights, a five nine for the finish judge. Guess what though? That's not enough. Arena Slutskaya wins the head-to-head -head matchup with Michelle Kwan. They split the votes. Three judges put Kwan in second place. Two judges put Kwan in first place. But it's Slutskaya who now wins for the third time in four matchups between the two. Arena picks up two points for the win, Juan one point for the loss, but it's a critical point because the U.S. gets the win, 11 to 10, the final score today in Auburn Hills. And the winners right now are with Susie Wynn.
I am here with the winning team, Team USA. All right. Congratulations. Now tell me, what do you think was your uh, secret weapon? What was it? The American flag. <laughs> it was a great, great team spirit. How did the audience feel to you? The audience was great, you know. Detroit's a lot of fun to see. Tied to your hometown, did you get a little nudge from Detroit? Yeah, I think so. No, it, was, it was a lot of fun to skate kind of in my backyard, so it was, it was good. Wish you all the best in the, in the rest of the season, you guys. Congratulations. Yeah. Terry, back to you. All right, Susie, thanks. So as we say goodbye from Motown, one final request. Here's another one off the groove lines to make you smile. For Susie Wynn and Peter Carruthers, I'm Terry Gannon. Tomorrow afternoon from Paris, it's Trophy La Ligue. Our coverage of the Grand Prix Series continues at 2 Eastern, 3 Pacific. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.